the time.
at the time that I was at Portsmouth, I think it helped me realise my ambition. I came in a normal working class girl from Reading. I think I found my voice when I was at Portsmouth. Excited. Nervous. Relief. Adventurous. My very first day at Portsmouth, there was a mixture of trepidation. I was moving away from home for the first time. It was quite daunting. I had been in a place with that many people, but and that soon flipped around because you realise everyone else is more scared than you are. My fondest memories of my time at Portsmouth have been the friendships that I've made and also just being inspired in the lectures. It was so exciting to be at uni and be straight away in like a live broadcast environment and that first initial memory has sort of sparked something that hopefully I'll continue for the rest of my life. It's definitely made me a confident young lady that can go forward now and I wouldn't really hesitate to take on anything in life. The fact that Portsmouth were there and gave me uh, the ability to achieve everything that I've ever wanted to achieve means so much to me. The emotion I felt when I was sitting in Burgershen Hall was something surreal. It was the end result of a lot of hard work. I can remember all of those days sat down thinking, I don't understand what I'm writing about here or I don't know how to reference. Thinking back to how far I'd come along the whole journey and then handing that piece in and then receiving the results, it was a very special moment. What excites me the most for the future is that I can be Part of what I was thinking of being when I was studying university, actually make those bridges and those buildings and say that I've done this and feel quite great for it. Since I graduated from Portsmouth, I haven't been able to keep away. I've kept in touch with the alumni team. I've done some volunteering with them, so I've hosted some events. The careers and employability, they went above and beyond. And to know that they were there for five years after I finished university helped with the pressure of the real world. I benefited from the postgraduate scholarship and I think that has been amazing in terms of making it easier and less stressful to go and do a master. It isn't the end of your journey in Portsmouth. Portsmouth will always be here for you and as an alumni, there is so much more to offer. I am incredibly proud to always be part of Portsmouth. It is part of my soul. It's part of who I am today. It's made me who I am today and to be able to go back and keep giving back is great.
This is an important day in the life of the university, a day to celebrate the success of our graduates. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony and to formally declare this congregation of the university open. Please be seated. Chancellor, distinguished guests, family, friends, and of course, our graduates. My name is Anne Murphy, and as Executive Dean for Humanities and Social Sciences, it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you to this celebration event for our students. You will, I'm sure, already be experiencing how easy it is for your graduation day to flash past in a rush with all the excitement of showing your family and friends where you have studied and perhaps your favorite places in the city. I hope you're also catching up with classmates and flatmates that you haven't seen for a while. I really hope you enjoy all of those moments. And I encourage you to take a particular moment to take it all in, to take notice of where you are and who you are with, and most importantly, to reflect on what you have accomplished. What you have achieved is impressive. You've done an amazing job, and this marks a major milestone in your life. Getting a degree requires grit, wisdom, and determination. And therefore, it is right that this, we take this time to mark your achievements with celebrations, but also with the sincerity and gravitas that your qualifications deserve. And it is wonderful and such a privilege for us to be sharing this ceremony with you, our students, and your guests. Whichever award you have achieved, we know that you'll be leaving Portsmouth with all the hallmarks of a University of Portsmouth graduate. You are leaving here as experts in your field, possessing critical and reflective knowledge and understanding of your subject. Your training and education have made you independent and creative thinkers who are equipped to push forward the boundaries of your expertise. And it is important to, recommend, to recognize the immense value that you can bring to society. Your ability to generate new ideas, recognize opportunities, and bring original thinking to groups and communities to which you belong. All of these things will be of great benefit to society as will your contribution as responsible, respectful, informed, and active global citizens. We hope that your education and your experiences will have made you proactive and confident individuals, able to embrace challenges, seize opportunities, and confidently make informed career decisions to help you continue to grow throughout your life. And above all, I hope that you found through your studies ways in which you might make this world a better place, decent, more harmonious, and renewable. It therefore gives me great pleasure to be able to congratulate you on behalf of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences and on behalf of all of the staff here at the university. We are so immensely proud of you, as are your friends and family. And most importantly, you should be proud of yourselves. But you didn't get here on your own. You've had help and the support of the excellent staff and facilities at the university. And I know that graduation is all, always a special time for my university colleagues here, who over the past several years will have seen you grow intellectually, socially, and emotionally. They will have challenged you to do your best work and stimulated you to debate the key issues for our society helped you hone the skills that you will take into your future careers. And I hope they will have taught you a key lesson. You will have learned how to learn. In a rapidly changing world, that skill will stand you in good stead. Your fellow students have also helped you, shared experiences, and been invaluable throughout your studies. They will have lifted you through the tough times and pushed you on to work harder, and celebrated with you in the good times. Many will remain lifelong friends. The most important of all, though, are your closest supporters, those family and friends, 
who have helped and encouraged you one way or another throughout your whole life. They have helped you, kept faith in you, and willed you to succeed. Never forget their support. Today is an extremely important day for them also. I think it's appropriate now that you, our graduates, should stand up if you're able to. And with a very warm round of applause and cheering that is going to take the roof down, I want you to join me in thanking all of those who've been backing you throughout your student journey. And I really want to hear you cheer. So I'm going to go good, but one more huge cheer. Brilliant. Thank you very much, and please be seated. And I will say to our audience, the same kind of cheers can come from you when the uh, uh, graduates are walking across the stage. We really want to hear you celebrate. If there was one word to describe the way of the world in the past few years, it would be uncertainty. Our lives have been dominated by financial crises, political austerity, the pandemic, and more generally, discord and division. In the face of these challenges, it would be easy to be pessimistic and to assume the worst. But I want to tell you that graduation ceremonies like this one bring optimism and hope for the future. Because when I look at you, our graduates, I see passionate, highly skilled, educated people full of ideas and committed to making our world a better place. We hope you are proud to be a member of the university family, a university that is already recognized as part of a modern global elite tackling the real challenges of the 21st century. And we plan more, much more. The university has a vision that by 2030 will be the top modern university in the UK and one of the 100 young universities globally. We plan to be carbon positive by 2030, to be one of the leading civic universities in the country, to open up our opportunities to more people who we know can benefit from them. And we plan to, plan to translate more of our academic expertise into practical results. We hope that as we realize this vision, we can make you all the more proud of your association with the university. As valued professionals, future leaders and innovators in education, sociology, languages and linguistics, we want you to keep in touch throughout the rest of your journey. Please make use of our excellent alumni association and if appropriate, our careers and employability service who can support you with what comes next. We hope today that is not the end of your relationship with us, but the beginning of a new relationship as you become supporters of future generations of Portsmouth students. People like you are their inspiration. I encourage you to step out of this graduation ceremony with confidence and self-belief. More than ever, our country needs people like you, educated, skilled, and experienced. We need your aspiration, your dedication, and the mutual respect that you so readily show to others. Finally, I would urge you to live by the values of your university in all that you do. Be responsible, be open, be ambitious, and never ever settle for second best. I congratulate you all on your awards and wish you the very, very best for your future. Thank you. University has resolved to confer the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa to Becca Dean. By the authority of the University, I admit you to the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa.
Chancellor. On behalf of the University of Portsmouth, it's my pleasure to present to you Becca Dean for the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Becca began her career teaching English in a secondary school in North West London, following in the footsteps of her parents. And this is where she met her first husband in their very first teaching job. Less positively, this is where she also witnessed the multiple barriers facing young girls in the classroom. The pressure to conform to ideals, limited confidence and self-belief, and a lack of professional female role models in their networks. Becca is extremely proactive, and where she sees a problem, she provides a solution. So she set up her first charity in 2013, the Girls Network. The Girls Network provides mentoring and support for girls from the least advantaged communities across the UK by pairing them with female mentors, professional women, who help them to build the skills and confidence to reach their potential. And so Becca morphed from teacher to social entrepreneur and education advocate. With her first charity now inspiring and empowering over a thousand girls each year in Greater London, Sussex, the South Coast, the West Midlands, Greater Manchester, Tynham Weir, Tees Valley and Merseyside, she handed over the leadership reins and set about solving another problem, this time closer to home, where Becca was born and bred, namely Portsmouth, and the lower than national average literacy levels that we had here. Becca founded the Portsmouth Literacy Hubs. This, her second charity startup, helps communities across Portsmouth gain the literacy skills they need to thrive. They provide unique, creative, and adventurous learning environments that inspire young people to fall in love with reading and writing. The charity supports young people aged 9 to 13 in the crucial years between the end of the primary and beginning of the secondary school time when progress and confidence tend to dip and literacy can slow significantly. We knew Becca well here at the university as many of our female staff had volunteered as Girls Network mentors. We knew exactly what she was capable of and what she could achieve when she put her mind to it. So we decided to back her in this new charity in her first literacy hub. The Pompey Pirate was launched in the heart of Charles, the Charles Dickens Ward in September 2018. By offering engaging and high quality after school learning opportunities, her literacy intervention helped young people catch up and develop the skills they needed to really engage positively with all other educational opportunities and enjoy that academic experience. Indeed, the results of the first literacy hub spoke for itself. In 2018-19, the hub worked with 200 young people who showed significant improvements. On average, the young pirates progressed 50% faster than age-related expectations during the programme. Their reading age improved by an average of 14 months over just nine months, whilst otherwise they would have been expected to have improved by less than nine months in the nine-month time span. 100% of parents reported seeing an increase in their children's liking of reading, and 96% reported their children picking up a book far more often than they had before. The Pompey Pirates showed just what could be achieved in developing the perseverance and confidence of young people. In 2019, 350 young people benefited from the programme, with more teachers and vol volunteers being recruited. For these children, it proved to be an educational lifeline. During COVID, when all around us, educational inequalities, particularly in our region, were widening. Every local school wanted their least confident readers to have access to the programme that Becca had developed. And so, in 2022, Becca found the funding, the site, and the volunteers, which take some tenacity, to set up her second literacy hub, Port Sea Sailors. This is based in the National Museum of the Royal Navy in the historic dockyard. Like her first hub, teachers and volunteers work with local communities to create a hub that best supports their literacy needs. Therefore, each hub is unique based on what the community needs, and Becca believes that this is the best way to create lasting change. We look forward to the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and many, many more hubs, Becca. 
Becca's work in education has her earned her numerous awards, including appearing in the Forbes 30 Under 30 Social Entrepreneurs, Stylist Magazine's Women with Heart, the Shaping Portsmouth Award, and the Teach First Innovation Award, a raft of accomplishments that her first child, 11-month-old Ava May, can be really proud. Indeed, Becca is a role model for so many more than just Ava May. She has taught us that we don't have to live life as observers, seeing issues and problems and merely discussing them. Rather, we can act to develop long-term sustainable solutions that make a positive impact long after we have instigated them. Becca's contribution to public service and education is deservedly recognised through the award of an MBE in 2021, but in the late Queen's birthday honours. We are extremely proud to have you as a member of our University of Portsmouth community, Becca. Chancellor, it is my great privilege to present to you Becca Dean for conferral of the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Firstly, I want to thank Sharia for such lovely words and for being such a champion of the work that we do. I feel so grateful to accept this honorary doctorate. I am born and bred Pompey, as Sharia said, so I can't tell you how incredible it feels to be honoured by my hometown. The University of Portsmouth has been pivotal to the success of both the Girls Network and the Literacy Hubs, and I, was, I will always be grateful for the support we've received from the university. They've given resource, knowledge, and more importantly, and time, and more importantly, whenever I've come to them with a grand idea, like transforming a council building into a pirate ship to help children with the reading, they've got right behind it. And to my fellow graduates, congratulations. This is a huge moment for you all, and I'm sure you've all walked different paths to get here, but this is a culmination of years of hard work and dedication, and you should feel so proud graduating today. I was sitting where you are in 2010, 13 years, six prime ministers, and a global pandemic ago. And like you, I emerged degree in hand to a world riddled with problems. Ones that I feel, as sociologists and educators, we are uniquely equipped to address. I should probably add here that I studied sociology at university and started my career as a secondary school teacher, so I feel very at home amongst you all today. And I was asked today to share some inspiration and advice as you embark on your careers. <coughs> now, personally, I didn't leave uni with a grand career plan. And when I think back over what has motivated and moved me to action over the years, it was anger. So my advice to you today is to find your angry. I founded my first charity, The Girls Network, because I was angry that in the 21st century, there were girls leaving school unaware of their own possibilities. I tell this story a lot, but it was the moment that I suppose gave me the inspiration to set up the charity. So I was teaching in Wembley in Northwest London, and I took a group of girls into central London for a trip. And we were standing outside the Gherkin, and where lots of people were coming and going, and one of the girls looked at me and she said to me, Miss, why is that woman wearing a suit? And I looked back at her and I said, she's going to work with the men, that's where she's going. And it made me realise that some of the girls in my classroom just didn't know any professional working women. And I was angry that the idea of a bright girl in our capital city was unable to conceptualise the idea of a working woman. So I did something about it. Ten years later, the Girls Network has worked with thousands of girls across the country and employs over 20 members of staff, and it was all fuelled by that initial spark in anger that I had at the start of my career. Then I started my second charity, Out of Anger. That children living in this city, my city, have some of the lowest levels of literacy in this country. So children born into communities with the most serious literacy challenges have some of the lowest life expectancies in England. A boy born in the Charles Dickens ward in Portsmouth has a life expectancy 26.1 years shorter than a boy born in North Oxford. And that doesn't just make me angry, it makes me sad, it's unjust. And this particular angry inspired me to set up the Literacy Hubs, a local charity that works to engage children in reading and writing by working with them in fantastical settings like the pirate ship we built in the council building in the Charles Dickens ward in central Portsmouth. 
And it's my belief that as educators and sociologists, our anger at the world around us can be harnessed to drive positive change whenever we see problems. Maybe you're angry that the gap in achievement between the least advantaged children and their more privileged peers at school has grown wider than ever, and you're going to use your anger to address educational disadvantage in the classroom. Maybe you're angry that no, not enough is being done to support asylum seekers and refugees. And as sociologists and linguists, you will use your anger to build a safer society for the most vulnerable people in it. Or maybe you, you'll use your anger to become a policy advisor or work for a think tank and fight to change the conversation around refugees away from fear and hate towards love and hope. Or maybe, like me, you're also angry at the low levels of literacy of children in Portsmouth. And maybe you want to work for a local literary charity that's fighting to change this. If so, you can come and talk to me afterwards. There may be a pirate ship-based literacy charity that could use your anger. Thank you again to the University of Portsmouth for this incredible honour. And congratulations again. I hope you have a wonderful night celebrating this inc incredible achievement. Now go find your angry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the formal part of the ceremony and I invite the Chancellor and the Academic Registrar to make the formal declarations after which the students will process. We will be joined by the Chancellor and myself, uh, Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Anne Murphy. Before that though, and while we're getting ready for the students to process, we have prepared a short film of congratulations from colleagues across the university. It is my sincere pleasure to bring you warm wishes and congratulations on your graduation. Massive congratulations from me to you on completing your degree and becoming a graduate of the University of Portsmouth. You have achieved something extraordinary and the university is very proud of you and your classmates. We're so proud of everything that you have achieved in the most trying of circumstances sometimes and we have every confidence that you are going to go on and change the world. We look forward to seeing you move forward with many more wonderful achievements and milestones in your life ahead. We are committed to supporting you into the future and being part of your onward journey. You're now part of a global family of more than 250,000 Portsmouth alumni. I'm privileged to be a part of it too. I still remember the sense of pride and happiness from my mum and dad seeing me walk across the stage of the Guildhall. Congratulations to all of you. Well done for your achievements. You should be proud of yourselves. Congratulations to everybody and all the best for your futures. Congratulations from everyone at the chaplaincy team. Take time to celebrate all you've achieved, the memories you've gathered, the friends you've made and the person that you've become. My advice to you is to acknowledge the voices in your head, be attuned to the feelings in your heart, but always Always trust your gut. You've got this. I thank you for trusting those precious years to the University of Portsmouth and wish you all the very best for the many exciting things that life will offer you in the future. It is all about you and celebrating with your friends and family. And remember, you will always be part of Portsmouth. Congratulations on your graduation. Chancellor, as Academic Registrar, I certify that those presented at this ceremony have successfully completed their studies and have satisfied all conditions and requirements of the University. By the authority of the university, I confirm that all those who are duly qualified are hereby admitted to the awards for which they are presented. Chancellor, I present to you 
the following successful candidates from the School of Education and Sociology. For the award of Certificate in Education in Further Education and Training, Anthony Baker. <laughs> Lauren Ball. Claire Batson. Rachel Cansfield. Rachel Fisher. Craig Edward Goldsmith. Andrew Hibberb. <laughs> Sam Jerd. <coughs> and Leah Rudge. For the award of Foundation Degree in Arts in Early Years Care and Education, Whitley Azura Amabal Biggs. <laughs> Holly Burks. <laughs> Samantha Dyer. Taylor Therin Ryder. <laughs> Chloe Hurd. <laughs> Jasmine Zeta Jarman. <laughs> Freya Kingsbury. Stephen Maidment. <laughs> Alexia Moore. <laughs> With the Warmington Memorial Prize, Lorraine Murphy. <laughs> Lacey Pinches. <laughs> Jenny Pullen. <laughs> Leah Robinson. <laughs> Megan Sharp. Ellie Mae Smith. And Amy Storey. For the award of foundation degree in arts in learning support, Molly Bailey. Millie Mae Barney. <coughs> Kaylee Burton. <coughs> Gemma Cake. <coughs> Halima Freeland. Hannah Hayes. <laughs> M.
Ellie Hills. <laughs> Wayleng Humphreys. <laughs> Rachel Lunis. <laughs> Marie Jane Mandeville. Christine Roper. <laughs> Radia Sabur. <laughs> Nadine Smith. <laughs> For the award of postgraduate certificate in English in education in English, Leanne Endel. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Further Education and Training, Tonya Anderson Mills. <laughs> David Brumacum. <laughs> Anthony Davies. Raquel Gonzalez Fernandez. <laughs> Thomas Gorst. <laughs> Abby Harris. <laughs> Matthew Hooten. Emily McKinney. <laughs> Georgian Ellen Rose Oakley. <laughs> Joe Ryder. <laughs> Melissa. Thackerberry. <laughs> Charlotte Tugwell. <laughs> Neve Yarwood. <laughs> For the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Geography, Annabelle Corkett. <laughs> Emily Hill. <laughs> For the award of postgraduate certificate in education in mathematics, Samantha Fancourt. Charlotte Newell. <laughs> For the award of postgraduate certificate in education in modern foreign languages, Samira Bajwa. <laughs> Salome Bion. Matilda Carpenter. <laughs> Alicia Dacier. <laughs> Clotilde Du Poudre. <laughs> Salome Farmery. Annalise Goldsisson. <laughs> Ra
Rachel Goland. Roberta Grossi. Marie Hautault. Sarah LeBlanc. Mathilde Messeyeshevi. Christina Mina Gomez. Emma Nutt. Yvonne Uaton Escobar. Juliette Poisson. Raphael Res Lerec. Chloe Roman. For the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education in Computer Science, Peter Ashdown Knights. Jason Sonny Cooling. With the John Edwards Memorial Prize, Amanda McIntosh. For the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education in English, Courtney Ambrose. Lily Bamford. Kira Bryan. Jake Cunningham. Faye Holland. Jasmine Lallis. Charlotte Mail. Laura Miles. Keely Stout. and Rebecca Taylor. For the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education in Further Education and Training, Donna Bennett. Aaron Broadbridge. Molly Broughton. <laughs> Kaylee Eastman. <laughs> Mia Finnegan. <laughs> Esther Fletcher. Shannon Green. With the Reverend Canon Charles Foster Prize, Alex Hartley.
Tanya Kozinski. Ellis Langdell. Hannah Miller. Marcia O'Farrell. And Liam Taylor. For the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education in Geography, Isabel Covey. Justine Dunlop. Ellie Hill. Dominic Owen. Alexandra Rudge Hales. Alexandra Webb. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Mathematics, Michael Baines. Rachel Cornish. William Duckett. <laughs> Joa Ricardo Girera Castino. Hetano. <laughs> For the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education in Modern Foreign Languages, Peng Kong. Charles West. For the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education in Science, Amy Tranter. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Higher Education, Nagar Akbari. Selina Ahmed Ali. Claire Marie Coulter. Emma Cuffley. Harriet Curzon Hope. Barvin dead here. Inka Godfrey. Susan Hadley. Jenny Hayward Hull. Louise Jenkins. <laughs> Michelle Kane. <laughs> David Knowles. <laughs> Peixing Lim. Katie Osborne. Holly Robson.
Rasha Saeed Suleiman. Claire Smith. Eleanor Swain. Gary Thistleswait. Fiona Ware Heiner. Stephen Walliter. This concludes the presentation of students from the School of Education and Sociology. I now present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Languages and Applied Linguistics. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in Applied Languages, Siana Asanova. <laughs> Adesola Ayo Adoyomai. <laughs> With the Banco Espirito Santo Prize for Best Dissertation Project in Applied Languages, Chloe Cole. <laughs> Carol Geraldo Morales. <laughs> Lenka Grikova. With the Banco Espirito Santo Prize for Best Dissertation Project in Applied Languages, Alicia Gurana. <laughs> Denisa Hellerova. <laughs> Marquita Kabat Railsford. Senior Capilla. <laughs> Eugenia had apologies. Eugenia Jezilkova. <laughs> Mikowai Leskiski. Kane Livingston. <laughs> Ajniska Machikuk. <laughs> Yulia Alexandra Musat. <laughs> Lorin Oscar. Flavia Plazjenta. <laughs> Insaif Sabala. <laughs> Lucy Velanda. <laughs> Zian Adia Walker Archer. Alexander John Wilkinson. <laughs> Simona Zukas Kate. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in Applied Languages with Qualified Teacher Status, 
Charlotte Bailey. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in English, Language and Linguistics, Mia Bassi. With the Shrey Prize for Best Dissertation in English, Language and Linguistics, Mandy Bentley. <laughs> Isabel Booker. <laughs> Ellie Caddick. Jasmine Doug. Edward Dyer. Amelia Jackson. Vera Kaur. Nicole Kestakidi. <laughs> Chloe Long. <laughs> Sophie Osborne. <laughs> Kira Ryan. Isabel Sellers. <laughs> Georgina Sovrani. <laughs> Matilde Vegas and Almeida. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in English Language and Linguistics with Literature, Kobe Jones. Sarah Lucar. Lydia Spring. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Business Communication, Kayafat Abolia Lukman. <laughs> Mariam Aleo Aloa. <laughs> Mariam Ajuk Sunmola. Ndrong Huang Ni Tran. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor in Arts in International Trade Business Communications, Jengba Shinda Ajala. <laughs> Yue Tai. Emmanuel Christopher. <laughs> Jun Ding. <laughs> Jun Jiang Guo. <laughs> Xi Jing Hua. Abdullah Ruf Osbalhali Yusuf. <laughs> Jung Jaja Zhang. <laughs> 
Fei Fan Zhu. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Trade, Logistics and Business Communication, Ola Joko Grace Ajapa. <laughs> Rusi Zhang. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in Language Studies, Sara Braz Carrillo Baptista. Veronica Chitstikonova. <laughs> Louise Cronshaw. <laughs> Jack Gladdy. <laughs> Ali Henderson. Yin Drink Street, Clanova. <laughs> Beatrice Mendez Barros. <laughs> Lucy Nemkova. <laughs> Ray Van Shaw. With the school prize for the best dissertation in language studies, Emma Vickery. <laughs> for the award of Bachelor of Arts in Modern Languages and with the Banco Espiritus Santo Prize for best dissertation in Modern Lang Languages, Emily Batchelor. Megan Buckland. <laughs> Maxine Freeman. <laughs> Olivia Hall. <laughs> Jade Mirvi. Sara Vieira Sardinia. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in Modern Languages with Qualified Teacher Status, Neil Sodring. For the award of Master of Arts in Business Communication for International Leadership, Mehdi Hassan Sayan. <laughs> for the award of Master of Arts in Translation Studies, Ella Bigo. This concludes the presentation of students from the School of Languages and Applied Linguistics. Chancellor, I present to you Lenka Grakova to respond to the university on behalf of the graduates. Chancellor, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honour to stand here before you today and speak on behalf of my fellow graduates. Firstly, 
I would like to take this opportunity to say congratulations on this incredible achievement. Good one. No existe gran talento sin gran voluntad. Or in the translation, there is no great talent without great will. The willingness, courage, and consistency which we have put into learning language of the greatest examples of our commitment to the University of Portsmouth. We will never forget the challenging moments when we were trying to manage the pressure, especially through the pandemic. Despite all of that, it is very important to remember that university is more than these difficult times. Our lovely antique park building and its never-ending period staircase, which grew close to our hearts, but exercised our lungs too. All the special people that we have met in our Pompeii, but also anywhere in the world throughout our year abroad. The memories that we have created made each of our journeys to the graduation unique and special. We would not be here without those who supported us along this way. All the excellent academic stuff, well-being and ask services, thanks to you and all the opportunities provided by the University of Portsmouth, many of us got out of our comfort zones and challenged ourselves. Today's award is a landmark in both our personal and professional development and a stepping stone to our future success. We are the University of Portsmouth, and as cliched as it sounds, we have helped to shape it in the time we have spent here. And in turn, Portsmouth has helped to shape us. So congratulations, the class of 2023, and thank you to everyone who helped to get us here. Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, massive congratulations from me to you on completing your degrees and becoming 2023 graduates of the University of Portsmouth. We have something in common because I am also a graduate of the University and have been where you are sat 31 years ago. Although it was a very, very long time ago, I still remember the pride and the happiness from my mum and dad seeing me walk across the stage of the Guildhall. They were first generation immigrants from Barbados to the UK and my graduation was a huge achievement for them both, not just me. I also remember my overwhelming feeling of relief and happiness that I had done it but also slight trepidation about what was next. Getting my degree was the first big step in a lifelong journey of learning, and I continue to learn every single day. Graduating is an amazing achievement, and I hope you take the time today to pause for a moment and really celebrate take the time to reflect on what you have just accomplished with your time here at Portsmouth. Please do make sure that you share your stories of your next steps. We love to hear about the great things that all of our graduates are doing because it does inspire the next generation. Now, as you enter the next phase of your learning journey, there are constant life changes. I know there will be many highs, but there will also be some bumps in the road. The socio-political environment we find ourselves in today may be bringing some form of anxiety. The continuing war in the Ukraine, persistent inflation, cost of living crisis, these are all real challenges that all of us face. This environment, combined with the constant arrival of new technological developments, innovations, 
and changes in the way that we work means that we find ourselves constantly plunged into what psychologists call a learning dip. During the period of which you're learning something new, your performance naturally dips. But over time, as you get more experience, your performance rises again. The issue for all of us, however, is that we're constantly having to learn new things as the world is changing so quickly. Hence, we're constantly being plunged into the dip, which can trigger fear and worry. Worry that we will initially not be totally competent and that we will somehow get into trouble as a result. And this affects our confidence. So when this happens, I want you to remember something for me. Whenever you feel like you can't, I want you to turn that thought into I can't yet, because you will be able to do it, whatever it is, with the right support, with the right encouragement, and with perseverance, you can and you will achieve. You have so much to offer. We believe in you at the university, I believe in you. The university will be here to support you and be your cheerleaders on your next step. You're part of that global family of 250,000 Portsmouth alumni. I'm privileged to be part of it too. Make the most of the wonderful connections that that brings and the networks and the mentoring and the community that will open up to you. You will have times ahead when you are not sure about what the right decision is, what is the right thing to do. I said this on the video, my advice is to always acknowledge the voices in your head, make sure that you are attuned to the feelings in your heart, but always trust that gut, trust your gut. Now, one last thing, and it is important, please take the time to look up from your screens and look around you. Really, really look at what's around you because you have the ability to change the world and you do that by starting to change what is immediately around you. You have the ability to make the world a much, much better place. I genuinely believe that everybody has got a superpower inside them and it's just about finding it, nurturing it and then making sure that you use it. It's an amazing gift that all of us have Please use it wisely, and I'm relying on you to do this. But right now, it is about celebrating with your friends and your family. Enjoy it, you deserve it, you've worked incredibly hard, and you will always be part of Portsmouth. Congratulations, class of 2023, really well done. I now declare this congregation closed. Please be upstanding for the academic procession.